Hello everyone, welcome to this video about a hack, a trick to use on 251s. And it's kind of a companion video to an earlier video I made called um, Soloing on a minor 251 is super easy, improv hack. And now I have kind of the same principle for major 251s. And to make that work, we're gonna to have to take a look at major seven arpeggios and how we can use them to simplify a 251 progression. So let's explore where those major seven arpeggios are on the guitar. And if you've watched more videos on my channel, then you already know in which way I map concepts on the neck and it's always tied to chord tones. So whenever I, I want to practice an arpeggio or a line, I try to link it to the root of a chord, the third and the fifth. And I used to call that my first, second and third position of a chord, but that's actually kind of confusing I found during a recent workshop. So now I actually call it the first, third and fifth position of a chord. That's just easier because now the third position is tied to the third and the fifth to the fifth. And so I have no second or fourth position because I always only try to link everything to three notes. So for me, the major seven arpeggio, and we're gonna look at G major seven. There's one around my first finger, uh, around the, the root of the of G, so, right? Uh, that's the first position of G. Then there's one around the third of G, third position of G, and one around the fifth. So the arpeggio around the root, with my first finger around the root, is in fact with my first finger on the major seven, but that's for me, it's the same place. It's it's around the third fret. So the major seven arpeggio, if you really want to play that, it would be uh, G, B, D, G, B, D, F sharp. So I'm, I'm gonna start on F sharp because that's the lowest possibility. That would be one way to play the major seven arpeggio. In practice, I usually play play it like this. On the way up and the way down, I usually... Now you say, well, that's kind of weird. Why would you go up a different way from down? But that's because I never play the major seven arpeggio just as an arpeggio. I usually play a line. And that's what I want to show you. I want to show you uh, some nice lines that you can play. With this, with this arpeggio as a basis. But of course, you can develop your own lines or if you transcribe a major seven line, you can tie them to the different positions. So let me show you the lines for uh, the first position of G. So the line, the ascending line would be like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> For right, and then I have a line starting on the high and the high E string, which would go like this one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So these are just two examples. You can make your own lines, but let's say I want to play a solo uh, with these lines and it would be something like one, two, three. All right, so now I'm taking that line as the basis and then I improvise around the line. So instead of using I suggest that instead of using the arpeggio as a basis, just take these lines as a basis because they're very musical already. And then you can try to embellish the line instead of the arpeggio. Um, for me, this would be like the basis of G major seven first position. So let's look at G major seven second position, which is around the third on the B. So uh, like just a normal major seven arpeggio, G major seven would be here. So it's G, B, D, F sharp, but I'm starting on the B. So you get B, D, 
die F Sharp G. So uh, again, let me give you a nice line as a basis instead of the arpeggio. One, two, three, four. Ascending line. And now descending line. One, two, three, four. Right, so now you have one starting on the low B, my ascending line, and one starting on the high B, descending. And of course, in the lines themselves, there's also a change of direction. Right In the ascending line, there's also a descending part. But these are just two lines, one starting on the low third and one starting on the high third. Okay, let's look at um, G major 7 from third position of G, so it's around the fifth. And a plain G major 7 arpeggio would be like this. And um, let me give you two lines again. So one ascending line, one, two, three, four. There's also a great line to play in triplets. You can just play three, four. You put one note behind it to end on the beat. And let me give you um, a descending line starting on the high or around the high fifth. One, two, three, four. I like to start this line with an upstroke. Or with a pull off. Okay, now you have six lines, all based around major, a G major 7 arpeggio, but none of them are actually a G major 7 arpeggio just straight, right? There's Lots of other notes and changes in directions and embellishments to give you a nice line. And I always opt for taking that as the basis, taking a line as the basis for improvisation. So now you, you can change these lines in many ways. For example, when you take uh, the third position G ascending line, you could only play the last part. You could even play it in triplets and repeat it. But you just experiment with these lines and try to um, make your own variations on them and try to connect them. And for example, if you have this line, the second uh, position uh, ascending. So that's my, with my first finger on the, on the B, right? But if you would be, for example, with your fourth finger on the B, you can, you can go into the first position. So it's your job to figure out these things. Try to, to, to play G lines and connect everything. So just put a G backing track and experiment with this, uh, with these lines in this way. And of course, find your own lines and tie them to the same positions. And then you'll see that if you uh, learn the lines like this and, and you are maybe playing a song in G and you'll find your hands at the second position of G, so around the third, you have many lines there to play and 
you will start connecting them in surprising and creative ways, which is um, what should happen. Okay, now uh, let's get into a cool thing that you can do with these uh, 251 lines, uh, sorry, with these major seven arpeggio lines on a 251. What I'm gonna tell you is the major variant of a minor trick I explained in the video called uh, Improv over minor 251 is super easy, uh, something like that. That's some kind of uh, clickbait title like that. It's linked on this video and, and I explained that the two chords in a minor 251, so let's say we have a two, 251 in D minor, then the first chord would be E half diminished. If you have trouble playing over E half diminished, just think of it as G minor, the four chord of D minor, because it's basically the same chord. Now the same thing is true for a major seven, uh, for a major arpeggio, a major <laughs> two five one. So if you have a major two five one in D, so E minor seven, A seven D, then that E minor seven, you could just substitute that at least while improvising, so in your head, with the four chord of D, which is G or G major seven. So you could play G major seven, and then on the A seven, you could still play that G major seven, because now you're just playing a, a, a sus sound. And then for the D major seven, D major seven, you switch to D major seven. So now instead of playing three chords and trying all kinds of uh, cool sounding, but complicated alterations, you could just use two major seven arpeggios. G major seven to D major seven. So you have E minor, E minor seven for your first chord. And you play G major seven. And then for D major seven, a7, you do the same thing. And then you switch to D major 7. Now, when you switch to D major 7, you could switch in the middle of the A7 bar, for example. You don't have to switch exactly on the 1. So, so now you're playing two sounds, G major 7 and D major 7, and you connect them, and you can switch anywhere inside that 2-5-1. Um, so if you master the major 7 arpeggio, you have a very convenient way of playing 2 5 ones. So you see 2 5 one, let's say you, you're playing coquette, right? So the chords are D, and then you have E minor 7, A7, and then again. So you have the 2 5 one in D, but then the 2 and the 5 are uh, come around twice. So you could just Skip all those chords, or, or don't think those chords, just think 4, so G major 7, to D. So now you can play D major 7, G major 7, stay. Now switch to D somewhere. Right? So you only have two chords to play, D major 7 and G major 7. So to give you an example of that, I recorded the backing track. I was playing with that backing track in the beginning. And it's a 2 5 one to D, so E minor 7, A7 to D, and then a 2 5 to B, so C, ma C, ma uh, C sharp minor 7, F sharp 7, which is basically the bridge of all the things you are, but then uh, transposed to starting in D instead of G. So what I'm gonna play is I'm gonna play G to D major 7. And then for the 2 5 one and B, I'm gonna think E, for the four chord for B is E, to B, right? And I'm just playing my, my lines, maybe I'll add some other lines, but I try to connect all my major seven arpeggios so that they, into the next arpe major seven arpeggio uh, shape, so it becomes one line. So for example, I, I play, maybe I play the, First, uh, first position of G on E minor, and I have to switch to D. So I'm now with my hands for the third uh, position of D. 
So it goes. So let's do the same thing for um, the the two five one in B. So I'm playing the first position of E, switching to the third position of B. Of course, that's very high. So let's try. Let's start on the third position of E. Right, and I, have, I can switch to the first position descending of B. Of course, making these connections is, is not easy to do it on the fly. So you have to practice. You have to practice all the two or five ones. Just write down on a sheet. Let's say you're starting with to practice a two five one in D. So write in your sheet G to D, G major seven to D, and then um, you start practicing a two five one in E flat, and then you write A flat major seven to E flat. So let me uh, just play some lines. Uh, I'll try to do it easy lines on this. 251 loop I have 251 to D, 251 to B. And I'm just gonna play G major 7 to D major 7 on the 251 in D. And I'm gonna play E major 7 and B major 7 on the 251 in B. <laughs> So the lines, they sound, they sound pretty cool, right? It sounds, it doesn't sound like I'm simply finding the chords. I'm, it sounds like I'm uh, playing something quite sophisticated, but I'm just playing two major seven shapes. And um, it is a lot easier than you think. Uh, if you wouldn't know what I was doing, you maybe try to figure out all the notes and then compare them to the chords. But I'm just skipping like the middle chord, like the five chord doesn't exist. I'm just playing two major seven shapes going, uh, flowing from one into the other. Um, so it, I'm not giving you all those lines. I want you to experiment. It's more of a concept. Just if you see two, five, one, again, last time, just think four, one. So two, five, one in C, you're not gonna think D minus seven, G seven, C. You're gonna think four of C's, F, F major seven. To C major 7. And when you switch to the C major 7, it's up to you. You can switch early, late, anytime you want, as long as you do switch, right? So you have to, at one point, resolve it. It's not really resolving, but you have to resolve it to the, the, the one major 7 arpeggio. Okay. Um, I hope I made myself clear. Uh, I, I know nor normally I give you clear lines, but this time it's more of a of a concept. Although you have the lines that you can start with. Um, I see you all in the next video. Bye.